Artists and creatives often struggle with the battle between quality and quantity. Should I sacrifice some quality to create a higher volume of work? Or should I reduce the number of things I make in order to produce a single work that has the absolute best quality I can achieve? Making art in a vacuum isn't possible. Time, money, and energy are vital chemicals to consider in our creative experiments. Before going further, we should first define what quality and quantity really mean. Quality is subjective. One person's garbage is another person's treasure. Some enjoy country music, while others can't stand it. The quality of a work of art is dependent upon one's subjective interpretation of that work. Quantity can be measured. These measurements can be given a numerical number. Regardless of the quality of a musical album, there's no debate over how many songs exist on a 10-track album. Radiohead released their more experimental album Kid A after their critically acclaimed alternative rock album OK Computer. They ditched the intricate guitar melodies of OK Computer in favor of electronics, modular synths, highly abstract lyrics, and more experimental and atmospheric uses for guitars. Some fans loved Kid A on first listen, Many found the experience far too weird and different from Radiohead's first three guitar-driven albums. Regardless of how one personally feels about the quality of Kid A, everyone can agree there's 10 songs on the album. The listening quality for each song on any given album is going to vary from person to person. Track 1 might be your favorite song, while track 5 is your girlfriend's favorite song from a record. Maybe 90% of the fan base hates track 3, while a dedicated 10% of the fans argue track 3 is the band's most revolutionary musical experiment. Quality is subjective. If it wasn't, people wouldn't argue over the quality of any given piece of media or art. Quantity isn't subjective or open for interpretation. Love it or hate it, there's no denying Kid A has 10 songs with a total runtime of precisely 49 minutes and 56 seconds. Look at any movie score on Rotten Tomatoes. A film with a runtime of 120 minutes is exactly 120 minutes for every person who watches the film. The runtime never changes. This is quantity. The quality of the film could be scored any number between 0 and 100, depending on the reviewer and their particular tastes. The collective consensus creates a number that gives you a cultural pulse for the subjective quality of a film, but even then, you have to experience the film for yourself to develop your own opinion. But you don't need to watch a two hour film to know it's two hours. Quantity gives you instant information about the contents, but for quality to be experienced, it must be formulated in the mind of the audience who must actively engage with the medium. None of this is to say that quality doesn't exist or that it can't be defined and measured. It's just that measuring quality is less precise and more open to personal taste than measuring quantity. There's obviously a difference in animation quality between the limited animation of a 1967 episode of Speed Racer and Miyazaki's animated feature Spirited Away. There's a difference in quality of character movement, background paintings, acting, and richness of story. Quality exists, but it's more open for debate than quantity. The video game Sonic 06 is notorious for having broken gameplay. On the surface, this would deem this game to be very poor quality. But fans of the game have put forth arguments that Sonic 06 is a failed masterpiece, with great level design burdened by in-game physics that didn't have enough time in the oven to develop and do the levels justice. Just like nature and nurture, quality and quantity interact with each other. A seed can't grow without soil, water, and sunlight. A seed might have all the genetic information to grow into a big tree, but the seed's potential to grow into the tree can never be realized without the environment. Nothing exists in isolation from the other. Now that we've defined the terms, let's focus on how we can apply these concepts to producing creative work. In the context of quality and quantity, you can't even get to quality without a quantity of output. Quality and quantity go hand in hand. Quality is the seed, and quantity is the nature that nurtures that seed. They don't have to work against each other. They both matter and develop together. Quantity matters 
because it's through countless projects, iterations, attempts, and learning from mistakes that you increase your capacity to create quality. Producing a high volume of work allows you to build the skills that lead to greater quality. Quality matters because it gives substance, depth, meaning, and purpose to your creations. Quality gives purpose to everything, even outside of art. It's far better to have one close friend you can depend on and have meaningful conversations with than 5,000 Facebook friends you barely know. Quality forces you to hyper-focus. Quantity forces you to consistently make things and increase your chances of achieving high standards of quality. Quality and quantity both matter. You get the result of quality in your work through the process of a high quantity of creations. The issue is that quantity and quality can pull your energy in opposite directions. If you're too obsessed with quality, you can become stuck. If you have to only pick either quality or quantity when you're just starting out learning any new skill or craft, focus on quantity. This is the learning period. Do the simplest projects you can complete in the least amount of time. Grind and gain those experience points. Build up muscle memory. Learn the fundamentals until you don't have to consciously think about the steps. Don't try to animate a full-length feature film before you've animated a simple bouncing ball. The sketching stage isn't the time to be agonizing over details. The rough draft stage isn't the stage to be fussing over grammar. Learning a 3D software like Blender requires learning the interface before you can create your 3D masterpiece. If you're starting a YouTube channel, focus on consistently putting out videos of an acceptable quality over time. It's much better to put out 50 videos a year that have 80% of your quality than one video a year with 100% of your quality. It's much harder to develop an audience by posting one video a year than by posting one video every week. That one video a year only gives you one chance to learn from feedback and mistakes, whereas 50 videos a year gives you 50 opportunities to learn and do better. If you focus on quality at the start of your journey, it will paralyze you. Artists should use the best tools they can afford but the quality of ideas is more valuable than the quality of tools. The cameras used to film Citizen Kane are less technologically advanced than the camera on your phone, but the cinematic quality and influence of Citizen Kane is greater than any random YouTube video filmed in 4K resolution. Quantity is how you build your skills, but the quality of ideas gives the work meaning. Focusing only on quantity without any regard for quality is like a hamster running frantically on a wheel, expending energy without going anywhere. You need to have a direction and goal. Your quantity needs to be directed in a meaningful direction that will eventually lead to quality. Using quality as a guidepost allows you to pinpoint the direction your quantity of work should lead you. If you want to be a storyboard artist for animation, Focus on building your best storyboard portfolio and submitting to studios and clients who would be specifically interested in your storyboarding skill set. You shouldn't apply to every art or graphic design related job in existence. You should focus on your storyboard objective and not be distracted by every shiny object. Knowing the type of work you want to make allows you to follow a clear path without getting lost in the forest of distractions. After you've built a large body of work, you can shift your focus from quantity to quality on a big project. This is the time to build your perennial bestseller. When you have a big project, like an album, a film, a series of paintings for a gallery, or a trilogy of novels to release commercially, don't skimp on quality. Do your absolute best work, get constructive criticism, step away from your project, Come back with fresh eyes and add the finishing touches to elevate the quality that extra 10%. Don't rush. There's a catchphrase in the video game industry that goes, a delayed game is eventually good, but a rushed game is forever bad. To summarize the thesis of this video, quantity and quality are measured differently, but they aren't mutually exclusive. Quantity leads to quality. A focus on quality creates a direction for your quantity of output. They both matter, but there's a time and place to focus more on one than the other. At the start of learning a new skill, put the majority of your focus on quantity so that your progress will come quickly. 
when you're ready to go big on a big project, don't skimp on quality. Do your absolute best work while also understanding that perfect doesn't exist. Produce a lot of work. The more work you produce, the better you'll become. Quality is a natural byproduct of a high quantity of hours and learning through doing. If you're having trouble with your work process, you can watch the video I did on perfectionism by clicking the video on the end screen or in the pinned comment. My shop animatedloop.com is having a spring sale until the end of April, so if there's anything you'd find useful, now's a good time to snag it. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters who make videos like this possible. Special shout out to King Leo Picasso, Mario Segade, and Nick Marsden. If you'd like a verbal shout out, you can join the shout out tier on Patreon. Other rewards include monthly animated clips you can use in your own videos, and behind the scenes stuff like PDFs of storyboards. This has been a video by Mikey Bizan Animation. Thanks so much for watching.